the involuntary movements that you make with your head and neck like this, when did that begin? I want to say like a month and a half after, after, after. the blast. Mm -hmm. okay. The movements that you're making are the kind of movements that your body would have made if there was an explosion. Mm -hmm. you know? And what it's doing is it's kind of repeating those movements over and over again. It's, I want to have you very slowly, very gently, opening and closing your mouth, just the smallest amount, and then come back a little bit, and then just go to where you feel a little resistance, that will trigger those movements probably, but will also give you a chance to feel what's going on before the jerks, okay? All right. So just let's just do that together, okay? Mm -hmm. Did you feel what happened that time? It was just a, a tingling sensation in my body. Exactly. What happens when you exposed to something like you've been exposed to, I mean, being in a war zone, and then having an explosion, it's almost like you get jolted right out of your body. And so what we're doing is calling it back into your body. The shock part has to be worked on first. Otherwise, if you were to work with the emotional part, you would very likely be actually just reactivating even further the shock reaction. And somatic experiencing differentiates between these two. Feel it in my hands. What are you feeling? It's a, a relaxation. It's where I can I feel like I can stretch my hands all the way out. I feel that. Feel your hands stretching slowly. Just feel the stretch. Not as tense. Not as tense, I know. Your arms were so, so tense. But again, giving yourself that gift of pleasurable relaxation. I honestly thought that time would be the only thing that would really cure my problems. But it's, it's like when you really let yourself be into it, it's a completely different experience. If you've had any type of traumatic experience and you've tried medications after medications like I have and just don't work for you, I would say broaden your horizon. After that last session, Ray and I corresponded a little bit. His life was taking a positive direction. He was entering a college degree program. He also got married and had a child. Look at that, bro. Can you see that? Then, in December 2012, Ray, his wife Melissa, and their son Nathaniel came to see me for a day. We discussed Ray's progress and his continuing challenges. 